Alrighty, so the problems in the the comments below in the video description. So here's a diagram of what's going on. And it's important, here's all the, the givens here regarding the initial position as the spring being coiled up at one meter and then this mass being released as the, the final and our system is going to be, be regarded as the spring plus the mass so our surroundings, the earth and beyond the universe and all that fun stuff okay so the first question ask for the maximum stretch dur during the motion and we know the work energy principle tells us this first one here and because no because this the spring is horizontal and we have a frictionless surface we can disregard any gravitational potential energy so that's why we can assume that the work the work is zero in this case so I, I filled in the kinetic final and initial and the potential not, not the potential the well the potential spring energy as the u final and u initial from the diagram this position being initial this being finalized okay so with that being said I did some algebraic rewriting of the the problem I have the final kinetic energy here and I substituted the corresponding values here's the potential spring energy here the final and then initial and initial so at the maximum stretch we're gonna have a final velocity of zero so that's why this final velocity over here goes to zero and the one halves cancel out algebraically plugged in the corresponding values k subscript s is the stiffness the s is the the amount compressed or stretched from the equilibrium point in this case we're looking for the final this final stretch and when you algebraically isolate the final stretch I got this answer in meters okay and that's part one part two is asking part two ask for the maximum speed during the motion and again based off of the same assumption that our work is zero that's how I was quick to yield this form here during the maximum speed we're gonna have a final potential spring energy of zero so that's why this right here is going to zero and we can disregard it again all the one halves cancel out algebraically and when we solve for this final velocity here when we isolate that we get this form here and when we do we plug in the values for everything else the mass the I think that's initial velocity yeah and everything kind of falls into place and you can check all of the values are plugged in with the original values from the first piece of paper that I had and when I compute everything I get this as my velocity and that would be the maximum velocity the final part gives us the assumption that our energy is 0 0.02 joules and let's see per cycle what is the average power input uh, watts required to maintain a steady oscillation okay so we know that power equals the energy over the displacement in time and we can rewrite that as the energy per cycle times the frequency we eventually want to get this answer in watts so we'll have to do a little bit of revision in this case we know that the frequency is equal to 
I'm pretty sure that's angular velocity. I don't know for sure that's omega. Omega over 2 pi. And of course, 2 pi is fixed. And we know also that omega, in consideration with springs and whatnot, equals the stiffness over the mass, or the square root of that, which yields us to this form. So basically from here, substituted frequency as omega over 2 pi, substitute omega as the square root here, all of that's t multiplied by our, our energy per cycle, plugged in the stiffness value and the mass value, and we have 2 pi, plug in everything and I have this answer in watts and I'm pretty sure that's it thank you